Assalamu alaikum everybody. No need to be humble in calling anybody of us by all means. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks uh, Chief Executive Officer of Local Government Authority Mohamed Nimal for the warm welcome this morning. We've been uh, in the in the known of this building for quite some time, as we were just mentioning before the meeting, and it gives me immense pleasure to actually finally meet you in person uh, as a first of many meetings to come, I'm sure, as we are all here. Of course, very happy to share part of this morning with the British High Commissioner to Maldives and Excellency Karen Rochler. We've been on this journey together. My, hum my humble <laughs> accompaniment was for the last three years, uh, but also it's great to be with all, of course, uh, LGO officials, my team, and then, of course, representative from uh, all the councils that are made it to here today. So <clears throat> as we are reflecting on what it is an assessment of gender dynamics and local governance, in fact, I was you know, looking at this screen quite a bit and I was maybe thinking that the insight from female council members should be the first line and then the assessment comes. I mean, in, in terms of chronology, the listening part of it is the first element from which then a moment of reflection comes into it. Now, none of the two elements are very standard day-to-day -day business. We do not always find the time or create the space, mental space in ourselves to actually sit down and listen. The fact that this report has been um, a sort of walk on the road gives me a particular pleasure because boots on the ground is always much better than staying locked in, uh, in, in Mali on a desk. But it, it basically shows that I think together we managed to reach out in a way that opens our mind and our understanding on listening. And that's where the insight for female council, uh, council members is very important because it was also very targeted because the care and the expression you give without listening, it was oriented to those that are the, f the, f the first informant of that. The other part, which is also important and I'm always very somehow anxious about is the moment of reflection that comes in the format of a report, which is an assessment, but it has to be a deep reflection, not only on data connection, not only on uh, the, uh, the, the voice I've been hearing, but it also has to be and formulate, ingested, processed within ourselves and within the policy of the government in a way that this assessment then comes with propositive action because we don't want this kind of reports to be and be shelved somewhere and then you know <laughs> keeping dust because it won't simply be appropriate uh, for us and won't give justice to that first instinct we had which was the one to go out there sit down and listen so i just wanted to make sure that yes there is a lot of good news in it which are probably vector of direction of what is actually working. And we have some evidence out of it, as we were just mentioning before. The fact of the quota uh, element into it has created some cracks into some obstacles that they were, were there before. Uh, gives also the confidence in the community that this can actually happen, and in some places it work better than the other ones. Then we should ask ourselves, okay, what's what, what happened in the other place? There was a a constant refrain in the presentation of some regional disparities. We need to go <laughs> in the southern at all and find out what's happening there. <laughs> if it was only that, I'm sure there are other dimensions which will somehow distribute it differently. But it's, um, it's important that this assessment that do give forward an element of, uh, of recommendations. What is holding women back, and I think it's one of the parts I'm pretty um, you know, close in hearing about is this element of uh, uh, the gender-based discrimination or harassment faced by women leadership in the daily work. It's not only about opening the door, it's also about how comfortable you are in entering that room on the other side. 
because you know there is a safe space for you to exercise a legitimate aspiration that you had to contribute to the wealth of your community and to represent uh, your community at the best you can with your, of course, interpretation and the representation role that many of us take as a call for service rather than a call for power, which is at times often <laughs> forgotten when we get into um, executive roles, I would say, in whatever forms they are. The other part which was um, interesting for me to see, which came also in the recommendation, so yes, keep insisting about the quota, keep insisting about you know, creating the conditions numerically on, the, on this space, is the profiling and equipping those who are going to uh, compete and sit for those to actually be active and um, strong. Uh, elements and strong uh, leaders in their communities. And that's the part of, I think, often being used, yes, but you know, you don't have the competencies about. We can, you know, we have many seats, but you know, you sit there, but you can't, you can't actually contribute. And this is where I think we should do everything we can to make sure that when we place together women leadership in position of power, they're gonna be good leaders because they've been structured, they've been invested on, they've been given opportunities, they've been given comparative uh, analysis of what other women in other countries, and we do work in 170 countries and territories with similar uh, drivers of change, so that when we're there, I can bet, and I'm very sure because evidence shows that in many assessments, that the participation of women in leadership position has been a driving force be, um, be behind strong development and uh, proper accountability and uh, at the local level especially as well as of course at the central level and therefore is a good choice to make. I wanted to, and just before coming on you know, here to give a couple of remarks, I just wanted to have a copy of the book in my hands because <laughs> As I said, it's not just number and statistics. It's, um, it's a lot more than that. When you opening yourself to listen to women, is the story of a person that every morning wakes up, dress up, leaves the family unattended for some time, moves towards office with a lot of aspirations, a lot of courage, and go through a lot of obstacles with um, significant strength. And for that one, this is just not a statistics, it is not just recommendation and colors and tables, it's a storybook of the life of many people we have the privilege to encounter. Thank you.